You are listening to Comedy Club for Kids presents. Radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense. Hello and welcome to Radio Nonsense, the official comedy club for kids podcast for all ages from... ...to... ...and everything in between. I'm Tiernan and this week, well, you lot just keep sending things in, so yes, I have to get into the mailbag once again and see what has arrived here at Comedy Club for Kids HQ. But this week... I've decided to do it a different way, to really embrace all the brilliant things that you send in. That's right, I have here my all-new shrink ray. Oh dear, I just shrank the entire bathroom. Um, Oops, I was just sort of giving it a go to show you how it sounded, but um, I didn't mean to do that. Linda! Linda, you don't need a wee, do you, Linda? Because the bathroom is now the size of a small pear. Linda! Okay, I I think we're fine. I'm sure it will be fine. Um, My real plan, using this shrink ray... Ah, no, that's just just made the kitchen the size of a couscous. How will I make a sandwich now? It'll be so small, I'll still be really hungry. Oh, and the stinky hippos are in a small, small fridge now. I wonder if that's made the smell less bad. No, no, it's just sort of concentrated it. Oh, this is, this is not nice. Right, sorry, Uh, as I was saying, I'm going to shrink myself down and then I'm going to jump into each letter and email and review that you've sent in to really see what it says and be kind of surrounded by the words. So, here we go. Aha! I'm now the height of one rice! And as I've planned all of this in advance, I have a twangy shatterproof ruler that I can use as a diving board to land into the open mailbag. Here we go! (laughs) Here I am! And there are even more letters than I thought, and they are huge! Oh, no, wait, no, sorry, it's the same as before, I just forgot. I'm tiny now. Anyway, let me uh, just climb up onto this one. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, a review, uh, and this one says... Oh, hang on, let me just stand back so I can read it. Um, this is from number one fan of CC4K, who says, It is the funniest show you will ever hear, it is amazing. Thank you so much, number one fan. Um, by number one, do you mean a wee? Because number two is poo, right? So number one fan means you're a wee fan, right? Does a wee fan send wee everywhere all over the room? Like a fan sends air everywhere? I mean, that sounds like an awful job. I'm very sorry you have to do that, but thank you for your very nice words about radio nonsense. Okay, now let me just climb uh, uh, over to this one and slide down this letter. Wee! Sorry, I mean number one. And here we go. Another review, and this one is from T.N. Thomas in the U.S. Uh, but it also says, from Oranges Are Us. So maybe maybe T.N. Thomas is like a, a representative of Oranges Are Us, or maybe the, the, the floor manager or something. Um, thanks for getting in touch, uh, T.N., uh, the, the, new, the new Thomas. Uh, tiny, nini Thomas. Um, tangy nose Thomas anyway whoever you are TN uh, their message says we now have oranges do we have oranges I think we just have bananas that drink juice bananas that drink juice that would be really annoying what if you want to have some juice and a banana and then the banana drinks your juice before you can that sounds terrible oranges are us might even be worse than lemons are us at least lemons are us pretend to have lemons who wants oranges or us anyway? The saying goes, if life gives you lemons, make lemonade. But if life gives you oranges or bananas that drink juice, then what are you going to do with those? Well, I suppose make orange juice for the bananas to drink. I mean, this is all very annoying. Okay, uh, now to do these jokes. I think we have... Uh, uh, over here! Ah, oh, hey, no! The shrink ray just zapped one of them, so they became the size of a bacteria. Well, I, I can't read that now. Shouldn't be setting yourself off. That is very weird. I must remember to check that out when I become normal sized again. Um, so anyway, this is the first joke that I can actually read um, from a distance. Let me just look into the far distance. There you go. It's from Squarkust, who is a hippogriff and Linda's pet, apparently. Wow, I didn't know Linda had a pet. Um, I also didn't know anything else about Linda either. She's a constant mystery. Um, so Squarkia says, why are the middle age sometimes called the dark ages? 
because they had so many knights. <laughs> I love it, and that's some very clever wordplay. Well done, Squarkiest. Um, also, though, it's funny because obviously knights is like knights in armor, but also knights at night. That's why it's dark age. It's very clever. But also, I reckon the knights, like the ones in armor, did make things darker because they all have the visors on their helmets down. And um, I have no idea how they saw anything like that. I think all that armour sometimes just protected them from when they walked into stuff all the time because they couldn't see anything. Thanks tons, Squarkiest. And then over here, let me just uh, jump. And this is from Luke who says, You should really start doing joke sections again. If so, here's mine. Look at the first word. Hmm. Uh, well, I have, I have started the joke sections again. Thanks, Luke. In fact, never really stopped them. Um, so let me see. Look at the first word. What's the first word? In the dictionary, oh, the first word in the dictionary is just the letter A. Is that a joke? The first word, A, A. There's a joke, A. This doesn't really make sense. Maybe it's like the first word a lot of babies say is often mama, isn't it? Maybe that's the... Uh, you should really start doing joke sections again. If so, here's my look at the first word. Oh, you, obviously you is the first word. That's confusing. So the joke is you. That seems unfair. I'm sure you're not a joke, Luke, especially if you're smart enough to listen to this show and send in clever jokes. Maybe that's not what he meant. Maybe it's you, as in sheep. Is you the joke? This is very tricky. I need to think about this for a while. Oh, not again. That's someone else's letter turned into a tardigrade's lunch. Right, I need to escape this mailbag before I get zapped again and I have to live my life, I don't know, as a dust mite or something. Before I do, though, a uh, big thanks to Vaily Coyote for joining the Linda edition of the podcast. Um, if you want to do that, your grimy beetroot heads, sorry, grown-ups, have to find the link in the podcast blurb uh, or on Acast Plus, and for a small fee, they can get you this show with no adverts at all, and you get to listen to it a day earlier, too. Most importantly, though, I can use the money uh, that you pay for it uh, to do things like buy a shrink ray, which, as you can hear, has been very, very useful. Uh, also, this week, again, I need your questions. The question pile is getting very, very small, and I'm going to keep saying this. Please send in questions. Um, it's getting tiny, even without the shrink ray. And so if you have anything you want to ask at all, then get your grown-ups to help you email me on podcast at comedyclubforkids.co.uk uh, so I can get a comedian to not really answer it. And I'm particularly asking any of you who haven't sent in a question to this show ever before. Uh, plus this week, as well as checking out our live shows at comedyclubforkids.co.uk, we are at the Edinburgh Fringe for all of August, so if you're there, please come and see our show. There are loads and loads of different comedians on every day. Uh, I'm also going to be at Camp Festival Shropshire, so you can shout at me there too. <laughs> Oh, no, it's just shrunk all the other things I was going to plug. And the apple that I had as a snack. How am I ever going to... Oh, the tiny grades eating that as well. Brilliant, thanks. Look, I need to get big again and sort all this out. So while I find a bee to fly me out of this mailbag, you listen to this most importantest bit. Hey. <laughs> Small. Yes, listeners, joining me today is none other than Chris Grace, a.k.a. Chris Grace, who's only twice been to space, a.k.a. Christophorus Grayskillies, the Pop Teenth, and as all our Welsh-speaking listeners know you, Rain no a Guffio, Chwyn Hathu Fi, Miss Gurdon Ur. But of course, Chris, you are most famous for your charity work developing eyeglasses for bats, for being the world record title holder of longest car journey without needing to have a pee, and most impressively, for being the only person in America who can fluently speak the language of creaky floorboards. Um, Chris, it, it's so lovely to have you on the show. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you for recognising my ability to hold it on a car ride. <laughs> Uh, but unfortunately, that does not apply for trips to space, which is why I have been denied my third trip. Second trip to space, I, I had to go a lot. We had to make a lot of stops on that Is one. that why? Because I, I didn't realize the two were connected, but now you say it because obviously you are, you are legendary for that. That car journey that went on for, I, I believe, several days. Several days. Cars only, didn't... yeah. But yeah. I don't know why. I, I got in the spaceship, and as soon as I got in the spaceship, I was like, you know what? I got to go. And we had to stop at a lot of the rest stops between here and uh, Jupiter. Wow. Which, How uh, many You know, those, those are rest they? stops are, well, there's 11 between here and Jupiter. Right, right. There's, I think there's one every, like, 10,000 kilometers or so. Okay. And that would make the distance between here and Jupiter um, a very scientifically accurate distance. <laughs> I think I think you've got it exactly. Actually, and our listeners can have a lot of fun working that out. Um, are they are they decent? I can't imagine what rest stops uh, are like in space. Are they well looked after? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, the Jupiterians are take pride in that. It's also one of their sources of revenue. Mm. Uh, they sell crisps. They sell uh, soda as well. They sell some pre-made sandwiches. You know, like a it's basically like a Tesco, uh, but with much more colorful staff. Right. That's. I mean, that sounds quite exciting to me. I think that would make most supermarkets a lot more interesting if some well of the staff you know you get jaded eyes. about this stuff really after right. a while the second trip to space it's like oh yeah we're gonna stop it and that's why i think the other um astronauts got a little miffed with me because i was making a stop so many times sure and i guess with space you've probably got a you know you got certain times you're meant to be at places uh, and i'm guessing you held the whole the whole journey up yeah we were late it was actually a surprise birthday party we were having on jupiter for uh, one of my Jupiterian friends, and we missed right. it actually. So that's uh, and, that's you know, like, so Well, I was going to say won't I don't know how often the years go. Years. Yeah, exactly. right. That's, so yes, yes. That, that's what I was worried about. So it's about uh, uh, for our years. It's about another seventeen years before another birthday party for him. So he he was a little annoyed. Yes, uh, we actually yeah. got there as the party was ending, and there was no cake left. People were very annoyed with me. So because of that, I've been banned from space travel. That's really sad. I do sort of feel, I mean, you know, not not to blame your friend, but if you only get a birthday every 17 years, you should probably have quite a long party. Yeah, uh, actually, that makes sense. You mean you should have it for a day at least, which is like yeah. a month of hours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it just keeps on going. You know what? I'm going to write him a letter and it'll get there in about 11 years. That's. I mean, that sounds fantastic to me. Uh, yeah. And, and, and then by the time he gets it, uh, you could probably set off for his next birthday and make it there in time. You know what? Actually, I should probably be leaving for it now. Right. Um, so, um, you know, we might need to conduct the rest of this from the spaceship as I travel. That's fine. That's fine. Is there going to be much noise interference if you do that? Or is it an electric uh, There would just be a little lag between when I say something and when you hear it, I think. <laughs> right. You know, like a typical space room. Um, you know, I don't know what kind of sounds you're... Interview style will pick up, but um, sure. I will just go ahead and get into my spaceship now. Sure. And, you know, I've got a lot of digital panels to put codes into and hydraulics that I've got to power up. I'm doing all that right now. I don't know if you're going to pick it up or not. Depends it's... on sort of how committed and uh, lazy you are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's very impressive watching you. I have to say, the fact that you seamlessly got into your spacesuit without breaking conversation shows how used to the whole process you are. Well, yeah, you have to do a lot of press if you're an astronaut these days. You know, it's, mm. it doesn't just get funded on the basis of the science itself. You still got to conv uh, convince people that it's worth doing, you know. So Sure, but again, you've got these strict time you. schedules, so you've got to do your TikToks while getting, you know, while flying the spaceship. Yeah, and, yeah. I'm also yeah. the social media ambassador for Jupiter as well, so I have a lot of TikToks to do for them. Um, and, you know, because of the time difference, their TikToks last about eight of Earth hours. So That's exhausting, and be yeah. Believe me, they're already complaining about the short attention spans they have over there, having to watch videos that are only, you know, eight hours long. That's pretty short for them. <laughs> that would be a nightmare for me if, it, if you scroll a couple of TikToks and you, you've lost a week. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and, you know, these are the same kind of TikToks that are popular here. You know, it's somebody just lip syncing to a Britney Spears song, but it's for eight hours. And it's the same song over and over again. Yeah, that's right. And it's the same choreo over and over as well. I mean, yeah, I think that is my that that is one of the worst things I could imagine, actually. And I don't know how you know, the Jupiterians deal with that. Jupiterians, for them, that's one of the best things they can imagine, you know. Wow. But that's just the difference between, you know, uh, Earth culture and Jupiter culture. There's a lot of we should celebrate the differences as we do in all. Yes, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, uh, art is, uh, you know, everyone takes art differently, don't they? Art is subjective, and so uh, for for me, eight hours of the same song on repeat would would seem difficult. But I I am great, you know. I'm really pleased that the Jupiterians get a lot out of that. Yeah, although I have seen you listen to eight hours straight of that sausage roll song. Yes. So, you know. Yes. I mean, but and you told me that that was high art at the time. I, yeah, I mean, it's because it makes me think of sausage rolls. 
that's right. That's what actually, that's one of your diets is you listen to music about foods instead of actually eating them, which I thought yes. was very effective. I feel very full uh, after listening to that song quite so often. Whereas you see Britney Spears' song Toxic is about stuff I can't eat because it's toxic. Exactly. So, I, so I've got yeah. no interest in, if, if the song is about a food I like, I, then I'm very yeah. happy to listen to it for a, a very long time. Yeah. Or it's about, you know, you're trying to stick to a diet, you eat a food that you're not supposed to eat, and it's like, oops, I did it again. Yes. Again, it's reinforcing the wrong ideas about, yes. you know, eating it was a healthy. Big, one of my big problems with, with Britney Spears' music is that it doesn't fit my dietary habits, and I, yeah. I'm i still angry with her about that. Even after, you know, everything she's been through, I still wish she'd listen to my ideal shopping list of food and make songs only about uh Crisps, sandwiches, sausage rolls, ice cream. Yeah. Where's my song about ice cream? I was very surprised that she didn't respond to you because it seems like she'd be very receptive to like your opinions about what songs she should write. Yeah, me too. I did wonder if she, I don't know if she's moved to Jupiter. I wondered if maybe she hadn't got my letters yet. Um, yeah, maybe it's taking too long. Maybe that has to be it, actually. Turn that has to be. The <laughs> it has to be. It, it can't <laughs> be that it's a silly request. <laughs> it's it's got to be the only reason, and I think that's also yeah yeah I think that's also why she's not immediately touring because she's got to get back from from Jupiter. So. I would say all of our requests, uh, you know, you and I are both creative people. We're mm -hmm. you know trying to uh, build careers in this world. And I would say most of our requests that go unresponded to, it has to just be that the message hasn't gotten to them yet. You know, yeah, like I think uh, you so. were, I've requested to play with uh, some Welsh rugby teams and, um, you know, my friend was like, they're not responding because you're very old. You're out of shape. You're not good at rugby. And I was like, I, it's, to me, it's that they haven't gotten the email yet. It's definitely because because I would have thought your ability to not pee would be really useful in rugby games. That's right. And I mean, as you said, I have a Welsh name. Mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, I mean, it's a very simple name to pronounce. It's so simple that I'm not going to attempt it. But, uh, you know, I did want to – I sent an email to Klinechli to see oh. if I could play with them. <laughs> and, yes. And uh, I in the email I said, this is the only word in Welsh that I know. And it's they, a good word. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure they were impressed. I would have think that would have bowled them over. And so, therefore, I can only assume you're right that they're on some sort of intergalactic tour, maybe. Yeah. And and they haven't yeah. received it yet. Yeah, essentially they're doing some kind of, uh, you know, like a, not Six Nations, but Six Planets type tour. Yeah, because I think if all the if all the the, bill, the tech billionaires want to go to Mars, I'm guessing all the musicians go to Jupiter, sport, sports players, probably uh, Neptune, maybe. I, I'm, I'm guessing different planets, probably different celebrities. Well, in rugby, you know, your wings go to Mercury because they're fast. Mm. And then your, uh, your props and locks will go to um, Saturn because right. it's hefty. It's a hefty. Like Saturn is really a, a planet for the forward pack. Right. And then right. your full fullbacks go out to uh, Pluto because they're so far away. You don't know if they exist uh, and you don't know if they're legitimate. Wow. Wow. That's very detailed. You've really thought this through. and I have. Yeah. And I'm also worried that you didn't send different letters to the different parts of the team at their different locations. Yeah. I mean, they're all going to get them at different times, which is, a, you know, that's it's one of the big challenges in rugby is communication, getting yes. people synced up, you know. But I always thought with rugby, as long as you try, that's all that matters. As long as you, no, I think you misread that. It's uh, right. as long as you get a try. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, I've really. Yeah, I'm sorry. I've really I think that's not understood why, rugby yeah. all these years. I think that's yeah. why you were dropped from the squad, to be honest, because they were saying, put the ball down, let's score a try. And you were like, I did, I tried. Yeah. And they were like, no, that's not. Yeah. It's also because I just kept eating a sausage roll while we were playing. And I, I didn't really play. I just sort of walked around with a sausage roll. Yeah, you were actually in just your regular, like, pajamas in yeah. the middle of the field, I, because... which I thought was a little off putting. The thing is, is, uh, and you know, all our listeners probably had to do homeschooling during during the pandemic. And, and you got to homeschool in pajamas. I got to do meetings in my pajamas. And I've just realized that there's no point in me ever wearing like normal clothes. I may as well just wear pajamas to, to all my work events now. Yeah. Well, I got that's yeah, that makes sense because you wore pajamas to this interview, which I thought. Yes. Was slightly unprofessional. But these are my professional pajamas. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I didn't see. Oh, yes. I didn't see the. Um, these are clearly tailored. 
Yes, and, uh, tailored, and then I've got a pajama tie, uh, pajama cufflinks. They're very yeah. fancy. Yeah, almost to the point that it looks like a regular suit, but it's the, yes, the, yes. It, the it's texture slightly... of the material is very thin, and they're quite uncomfortable to sleep in. So really, it's it's ruined the point of pajamas. You know, but but yeah, it really has ruined the point of pajamas actually. And it was well, I mean, but it's preserved your ability to tell people that you wear pajamas all the time. So therefore, it was worth it. It was worth that money that I it was. Sure I, I mean, you had yeah. all those business cards made up saying Tiernan, the pajama man. Yes, and, I did. You know, you do have that personal branding you've got to keep up with. So I mean, that makes. Yes, sense. I did, but I uh, I stupidly made those business cards to look like the label you get inside pajamas, and lots of people just threw them away. <laughs> Yeah. Just cut them off and um, threw them away. Yeah. Yes. I'll, I mean, I also think if people are throwing away your business card, that is why they're throwing it away because it looks like something else, not because they're not interested in. Yes. Yes. It. You're right. You're yeah. right. Actually, you're. This is. I'm so. It's so good to talk to you, Chris, because you've got such a yeah. good perspective on the on these areas of life where I might have felt rejected or like I wasn't. Of course. Doing good enough. Well, and, I've, and... Yeah. For example, like I've auditioned for a lot of parts in television and movies. Mm. Um. And my assumption is the parts that I have not, as they say, booked in the industry, that it was just merely a, a matter of um, that. Like, I'm sure that the video that I sent was broken somehow. Yeah. Or the person's computer was eaten by a dog. These are yeah, the reasons why that I'm happens, not Yeah, that happens a lot. I hear dogs eat a lot of computers. So, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. dogs love eating apples. So Dogs love eating sense. apples and cats eat all, all the all, all the mice that you have to use. That's right. So yeah, actually, I think a lot of casting people were trying to hire me, but their mice were eaten, mm. and so they had no way of controlling their computers to send me the email that says we're hiring you. It is That's, true. Uh, yeah, it is true. I, I don't I also, really believe that rejection exists in any way I, for either think, of us. I think you're right. And I also have to say that, you know, I think you're you're overlooking that a lot of people know you're busy. I mean, as we're talking, I can see you've now. You just about left the Earth's orbit, I think. Yes. Just judging by the, you know, they know you're busy. They know you've got you've got spaces to go and 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 people to to see in seventeen years time. Yeah, I mean the the I mean I will carve out room to shoot something for people. You know, I have a, a fully working studio, green screen studio on the spaceship, um, so wow. I can really create any kind of uh, set or environment that anybody wants. Yes. Um, I have the ability to actually, if you just let me punch in a few things into my keyboard here, because uh, I can actually change my appearance as well. Um, oh, wow. So this might look familiar to you, but now see, look, I've, I look just like you. Oh, my God. That's terrifying. How did yeah. you look like me? That's, that's right. wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I amazing. can also add more of a beard or less of a beard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so. wow. Oh, I like that. More of a beard is good. I should get okay, more, more of a beard. beard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That works, yeah. And actually, uh, I can stay in this mode until you're actually confused about who's who. Uh, I won't do that today, but I, I have done that Oh, thank that goodness, because was, I was, yeah. I'm already starting to get... I already wasn't sure if I had to ask the next question or or you did, because you're me. That's right. Or I'm me. Okay, let me, go, let me go back to... You know what? Actually, right now, I'll just make myself into... Um, uh, you know, a famous uh, royal from the past. Here, this will be like King George from the 1600s. That's oh wow, wow, pretty good, right there. That is very good, then, very regal. You've got the crown, right? Yep. Yeah. And then this is the uh, famous actor uh, Meryl Streep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> who yeah. all our listeners will know. And I mean, you look uh, yeah. unbelievably like Meryl Streep. This is this is amazing. Wait, this um, is a, this is a show. Uh, what age group is this show for? Like younger, uh, right? So any they definitely any know. age except one hundred, really. So it, okay. it's any age except, but I mean, yeah, probably, probably on the younger side of one hundred. Okay, so because I've met a lot of young people, um, you know, my my sister has some children that are two or three years old, and they right. they come out of the womb raving about Meryl Streep, uh, right, right, from the beginning. right. And so I know that that's a, very, a thing that kids feel a lot of passion for. Do you know what? It's probably my fault because I the only TikTok I watch is about. That sausage roll song. I don't. Yes. I I don't see all the new TikToks the kids are watching about Meryl Streep, and that's and I'm missing out on those. So that's right. I think that's probably why it's, I'm not down with. Well, the you're process. in a bit of an echo chamber, aren't you, with that sausage roll stuff? So maybe it's get all, out and yeah, as the kids say, touch grass, Tiernan. Touch is that grass. what they say? That touch. is what they say. Touch grass. 
touch grass. Right. What if you get hay fever? Uh, it, well, it's a two part saying touch grass and then right. take an antihistamine. Right. Okay. Okay. Then I will, so, I will do that. Because and that's, if I, I mean, if you want to be cool, that's what all the cool kids are saying right now. They're saying touch grass and take an antihistamine. Wow. So, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to, I will, I will do that. I, I'm going to, I'll, I'll do it and then I'll take an antihistamine if I can see it through my, my watering eyes and, and sneezing. Yeah. I mean, if you want to be cool, you don't have to be cool. I'm just saying if you sure, want sure. to be cool. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I kind of want to be. I kind of want to be cool. I, I kind of. I, it'd be nice, just even for like five minutes. <laughs> you don't feel like you've ever been cool. Not intentionally. I don't know. Uh, probably accidentally. I think I've probably been accident. I might have accidentally like turned uh, d- during a certain lighting, and people gone, "Oh, he's cool," and then I've turned all the way, and they've got, "Oh no, he's not." Right, right, right. Yeah. You. I've noticed that you have a specific. Um, angle of reflection mm. where you look cool yes. um, and in the 360 degrees there's about three degrees in there that you look yeah. very very cool yeah um, but they're very the hard other 357 yeah, they're yeah they're very hard, it's very hard to balance in a way that people see those three degrees like it requires a, a poise yes. that i don't have and a real yeah. strength uh, you kind of have to balance on your two big toes and nothing else and lean kind right. of inwards. You need that swivel. Yeah, and so I normally only do it midway through falling over. Right, but it, when you're falling over, there is like a three millisecond period mm. where people are like, "Man, he's cool." Yeah, yeah, but then normally then, the landing ru- ruins yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Then so, you hit the ground, and they're like, "Oh, he yeah. needs uh, medical assistance." Yes. But, right before that, you really do seem quite cool. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's what I try and ideally, I try and film those three seconds and and. May, you yeah. know, have that as a show reel or something, but um, right, <laughs> right. I mean that, yeah, yeah. It's hard to set up a camera for that for when you accidentally fall over. It, it's hard to to do that. Yeah, to do yeah. that, you'd need to have a camera on you at all times. I mean, it yeah. depends on how fall prone you are, which I'm not. Yeah, sure. and also you got to get a camera that doesn't break when you fall. Like, it, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of problems with it that I haven't worked out, but I, I hope I will one day. You know, I believe in you. I, oh, I mean, you know, I think. Uh, uh, if there's one thing people say about you that I've heard, it's that you're 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 cool in very small doses. Oh, well, that's so. a really that's a I think that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said about me. Actually, so. really, what what well, saying you, did that beat out as the second nicest thing someone said about you? Uh, it, it was. Uh, let me think. Um, it was you. You make a great cup of orange squash. Oh, <laughs> that yeah. wow, that yeah, is really a nice very. Thing. Really no one has day, ever said yeah. that to me. Yeah. Wow. You should you should try and make someone some orange squash. Well, I th- I think people haven't said that to me because I don't know what orange squash is, and I don't think oh. we have it where I live. <laughs> but, oh. Um, oh. Okay. Um. I'm trying to think of it. Do you mean in space or in 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 the U.S. in <clears throat> in the U.S. In I'm the not US, actually so sure what orange squash is. It's like an it's like it's like a, an orange liquid that you dilute in water, and it makes ah. a refreshing orangey drink. Got gotcha. you. What would that um, be called in American uh, words? That would be called uh, not a product that is sold in the U.S. <laughs> wow. What? Uh, we, I must bring squash to the – I'm going to send squash to the U.S. It will revolutionize the the nation. Well, when you know, when I was a kid, we had things that at home you would put water into to dilute them to make mm. drinks. But I would say in the last – 20 years or so, that's not really a thing that gets done in the U.S. very much. Wow, you just everything. get the drink at its proper ratio. Just full strength. Mustn't dilute right. anything. You just have to have all of it, all of the, the sugar at once. Exactly. For example, when I was growing up, you would get tins of soup. And yeah. when you would make those soup, you would dilute it. It would say, put the soup in and then put in another like can of water yeah. to dilute it. That doesn't happen anymore. So, wow. you know. I, there might be, is. maybe there's big industry forces um, pro, or I would say anti dilution. You know, yeah. Someone was stopping uh, the, the the dilution industry or, from taking. Or maybe hold. we, as human beings, particularly maybe maybe in America, you can just handle food at its full strength. You know, maybe ah. before we we couldn't handle it because it's like wow, too much soup. You, I can't right. take it. I just need a, like a fraction of soup watered down right. otherwise i'll get kind of overloaded but over time i think we as americans we have titrated properly yeah. so that we can handle 
yeah. soup at its full strength. And I, I wish you the best uh, where you are because I hope one day you're able to handle, for example, like um, a tomato soup at full strength. Wow. Or, you know, something crazy like um, a, a pasta fajoul. Wow. At full strength, you know, I, I don't, don't want to blow so. your mind. Yeah, you know. I think we've got a long way to go, but I, you know, yeah. Wow. Well, listen, Chris, I feel like I've learned so much. It's been so good having you here. And um, I've obviously I've got a question that I need to ask you. And it's one of the reasons I asked you on this on this show. Um, but before I ask you that, uh, I wondered if I could just do a little bit of admin, uh, if that's OK. Sure. Um, the the first bit is I'm I'm not sure if you're aware as you're as you're flying to space but this is an audio podcast and most of our listeners do tend to listen to it with their ears but as I say every week if they listen to it with their knees their bums we don't really mind you mm. know we don't discriminate however they choose to to take this show in that that's great um, and I just wondered if you had a favorite noise uh, that you could make for us oh well uh, I'll tell you my absolute favorite noise is in some of the video games that I play. Mm-hmm. Uh, the noise of when I level up, I, when I get enough experience in my life and I get a little ding, uh, and um, I'm trying to get this to happen in my real life as well. I'm, yes. I'm encouraging my friends and family to, when they see me really growing as a person, to just say ding to me. That would be wonderful. And, you know, I would yeah. like that. So, I mean, I hope at the end of this podcast, I level up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you will. I'm sure I'm I'm su- surprised it hasn't happened yet, but I guess it might be as you're traveling through space again your your time is slowing down. It it might it might be on its way. Time is I don't know if this might be over some of your listeners heads, but time is slowing down cuz I'm moving at a very fast rate. And in fact, uh Tiernan, at the beginning of this podcast I was older than you, but now I'm younger than you. You but you're so, looking good. I I did think that you, yeah. I did think you were looking progressively younger and it, I'm very, yeah. very jealous, but I wasn't sure if that was just your effects. I didn't know if you uh, used the No. Uh what it is actually is that I'm progressing at a certain speed to the point mm-hmm. that I'm actually moving uh through time backwards. Right, right. So when I so when we finish our session today, I'll actually be at the beginning of the interview and you'll be at the end. That's very confusing, but uh, so, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. And I, I think that might be might be why your 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 leveling up hasn't happened yet because it's due to happen, but you keep going backwards. That's right. I kind so, of I'm actually losing experience points yeah. as this happens. So, but that's fine that because I I'm enjoying talking to you, and I'm mm. I'm flying to Jupiter, so like I'll I'll get good. these levels eventually. Well, I hope so. It's, it's a fa- it's a fantastic noise, and I I wish it would happen in my life. I think it that's right up there with, and I don't know if you agree with this. I also wish, like after you brushed your teeth, your teeth would go ding. Like that's yes. what I always want. I want to know that I've definitely finished brushing my teeth properly because it's gone ding, like in the advert yes. when there's a little sparkle. And well, you want the little sparkle too. I think I want the sparkle. Yeah, yeah, and and the noise. And I think yeah. that's the same with leveling up. Ding, ding. I want that noise. Those would be really helpful in life, you know. Yeah, I mean, have you found like when 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 I was growing up, I used to measure against the wall how tall I was from one year to the next. Mm. Um, we'd make yeah, a, yeah. you know my my father would you know sort of line me up next against the frame of a door, and he'd make a little mark, and then we'd see okay oh in the last year this is what you've grown up. I'm, what I want is something like that, but for my life as well, like my, yes. my prospects. That's a really um, good idea. A wall that yeah. that tells you when you've leveled up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that'd be good. Well, hopefully by the time you return to Earth, that someone will have sorted this out. I mean, I'm kind of hoping you sort it out. I mean, that's I, the whole point of this interview. So right. Oh, I hadn't realized. Sorry, I am. I am making notes. So, I'll, but they're incredible. Yeah, I don't. So, the, the, yeah. Uh, wait, I'm sorry. Is this going? This is going out as part of a show, right? But really, this is a job interview for you. For me. Yeah, I don't know if you knew that. Oh, but um, I haven't said anything about how I'm. I'm a team. Uh, I I work great. By myself or as part of a team or whatever else you have to say when you're in a job. Interview. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what would you say is your greatest strength and weakness? Uh, crisps, but for both of those. Ah, okay. Yeah. I, I don't, yes, that makes sense as a weakness for sure. And our office is stocked with all kinds of crisps as well. Yeah. We have a, a whole pantry full of crisps and biscuits as well. So that's totally that's, fine. And, and I should say sure. that I, I appreciate that you, you being someone in the U.S. Well, you were in the U.S. Our U.S. listeners, crisps are chips, but chips aren't crisps. So chips are fr- fries. Anyway, it's something like that. But basically, I'm talking yes. about crisps, crisps, which are crisps, and that's what they are. 
Yeah, I'm that. Well, the company that I'm trying to hire you for is called Chris Chris's Crisps. Chris's Crisps. So, Chris's Crisps. Yes. Chris's um, Crisp Crisps. You should have gone. Yeah, for it. I have to say that you're going to be a salesman, so you will need to be able to pronounce the name of the company properly. Chris Chris. Chris. So. I'm there. I mean, I'm good. Really, if anyone is listening and they're able to say Chris's Crisps, Chris's Crisps, Chris's Crisps, Chris's Crisps, Chris's Crisps, Chris's Crisps um, if you could say it maybe four times in a row really fast, um, you could probably work for my company. That's fantastic. Oh, that's good. This, but you're going to get a lot of applications, except that you won't because you'll be in space and they'll take you years. Yeah. Take years yes. for them to get to you. Well, yeah. listen, uh, uh, thank you for the noise. The noise was brilliant. I, I'm going to. Um, I, I will I will continue to, to do this interview, but I just have to double check as well that, you know, um, I mentioned it earlier. This show is for people of all ages, uh, any age you can imagine, actually, Chris. I don't, can you imagine an age? Uh, I, I, I don't think this is true, but it makes me think that like like 22 is an age, but that, I, I've never met uh, anyone that's actually 22. I've never even heard that number before, but... I, I mean, I guess if if it if it is and it is an age, then it is this show is suitable for it, so that it's fine. Okay. But I, you're right. Okay. I don't. Yeah, I've not. I've not even really heard. Yeah, sure. I'm sure it's fine. But but well, it's suitable for any, every age you can imagine, uh, apart from 100. Long story. But every other age is fine. And so I just wanted to check if there were any uh, rude words that you won't be saying on this show. Oh yeah. Um. I just this is just a personal philosophy, mm-hmm. but I will not be saying. I'll say it once just so you can hear it. But I won't be saying the word, the phrase, uh, no cap. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am a very cool person. I listen to a lot of TikToks. I don't know if you, because you just watch sausage roll TikTok. Yeah, yeah. So, mm-hmm. I think they call that sausage talk that you watch all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. so you might not be, I mean, we established you're not as cool as like an average person. Um, yeah, yeah. That's but, and I'll say it one more time, but the phrase no cap, I will not be saying that. Okay, sure. Yeah. sure. And, and of course, I'm sure you know what that means. It means you're not allowed to wear certain headgear. That's right. Is is that right? So it's like it's like you can't you can't wear a cap. You can wear a That's trilby right. or a sombrero or right. um a little pie hat fedora. or sun hat fedora, but no no cap, right? That's that's right, yeah? That is what it means. Uh, I mean, you know what? You actually turn in. You're a lot cooler than I thought you were. I didn't think you'd know this phrase. Wow. Yeah. It's it's actually. But you say that, but it's because I keep wearing caps to the wrong places. And, and they so say I've no been cap. told. Yeah, and I've just been told. I've just been not allowed in and told off quite. Right. Well, so. Right. They because they you go to this club and they say, "Excuse me, sir, but you're being really annoying. No cap." Yeah. 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 And then yeah. you took that to mean that you shouldn't wear the hat to the place. Yeah, well, also because it it's the only place I go to, and it's the same thing they say to me every time, and I wear the cap every time. So you know, I I, I admire the... your persistence in that, really, yeah. because I feel like you know, I think a lot of people would be what, what is what we would call sensible. They would say this person is saying I'm not allowed to wear this piece of hat, uh, you know, this kind of hat wear into the uh, club. Most people would adjust, but you don't do that. You're very no. stubborn. Stubborn I'm man. hoping because I always think a cap, uh, a baseball cap, looks a lot like a kind of duck's head and a duck's beak. And I'm hoping one day they'll just think I'm a large duck that's coming to right. the club. Yeah. I actually sent you some yellow shirts and pants for that. Yes, I well. is, I really appreciate that. So yeah. as for my I wasn't attempt, using them anymore. I was uh, doing a, a theater tour as a banana. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a banana. Um, not is not a uh, same color. Not as dark, a lemon, so. by the way. A lot of people were like, "Are you a lemon?" Because of the shape that I have, the silhouette that I have. Are you a lemon? I'm like, no, I'm not a lemon. I'm a banana. Sure, so. sure. That may, I mean, that makes sense. It, and I, it's it, yeah, that makes sense. And, and because, as I said as well, bananas are the same color as ducks. I I could wear the banana suit that's not a lemon suit in order to exactly. be a duck. Well, by the way, I don't want you to I don't want people to think that you're a lemon as as well either. So, I'm just people There's a lot of concern on this podcast about what is a lemon, what is a potato that's painted yellow. And I, I you know, I I I appreciate that you you bringing that up. Um but I think if I wear the cap, people will be certain I'm a duck and hopefully I'll be allowed into the club as the night's honorary guest duck. Yeah, I will say the show that I was doing, I played a banana, but uh, the the I mean, I don't want to spoil it. Um, it was a touring panto show that I was doing. Um right. The the twist in it was that I was actually a lemon, I'm uh, sorry, a potato in disguise. Oh my god, as um, a banana. Uh, yeah, it was a sort of. I mean, it's I hope potatoes. I don't ruin it for anybody that's seeing it anytime soon. But um, you know, yeah, because you're traveling backwards, so you will actually be doing it again. 
Yeah. It's yeah. a show called um, uh, This Mystery is Appealing. Oh, about, you know, that's very good. It was about, yeah, it's a little so. giveaway in the title there, if you can work it out. Yeah, a little bit of a giveaway, um, and but either way, I was um, a, I was a yellow character with a white fleshy inside, right? Which is, uh, which is also what you put you printed that on the business card you handed me that you're a yellow thing with a white fleshy inside. That was and, so and then I threw that business the, card away. Yeah, you should have done because it was wrong, and also I, it's because I was hoping that when people read it, I'd already be dressed up like a duck, but I I, I wasn't. So yeah. It's, well, I think I've got a probably, lot of things wrong, Chris. I, 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 I will. You know, I'm open to admitting that I've got a lot of things wrong. <laughs> I, I don't think you should have ordered the the duck suit from um, Amazon Jupiter. No, I, I mean know. they that when they say they have two day shipping, mm. I, I don't think you understood exactly how long. I that thought it was space it space shipping. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not, days for them is like a month. Yeah. So I think maybe sometime this fall you'll be getting your duck suit. Chris, you are just far more sensible than me, and I've got to. I've got to live. I, you know, I, I I know I've made my mistakes, and thankfully you're sending me your duck costume. It, it, it's going to yes. be all right. I and 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 listen, you know, thank you for not saying n- no cap. I would never say no cap. Um, uh, was it? Would you? Yeah. Is it no caps or no cap singular? Can you have one cap? It's singular, yeah. You can yeah. have multiple caps. I just don't believe in discriminating based on what people wear in their heads. And I um, like And that. I don't want to promote that idea. Uh, I will sell, tell you that um, I sent you the duck costume, but because I'm moving backwards in time, it's not going to get you to you until you're um, 14 years old. So Right, right. So gonna... you would have had it already and maybe you lost it. Maybe when you went to university or something like that. Maybe I, you... I knew I had a vague memory of doing something like that. Well, that's... And that's ironically that has been the duck costume I've always wanted to try and find another version of. But oh, of course now, did your your memory of yeah. being a duck was the costume that I already sent to you because I'm moving is, backwards in time. This is too. This is very complicated. And I I wish I you know I wish I'd known these things in the past rather than in the future, which then leads to the past, which then leads to the future, where I then regret the things I didn't know in the past, and it's it, it's very confusing, but. No, Chris, I'm glad you're here right now. I'm glad you're not saying no cap. I won't say no cap. Thank Nobody's going to say no cap on this show. And, you know, I have got this question that you may or may not have answered in the future already or in the past. I, I don't really know anymore. Um, and, and this question is kind of two questions. I, I, I'm going to read it to you all at once, if that's okay. And okay. we can take it in, in parts if you like. But it's all a kind of one one thing so um this being sent in and and uh, the the sender in says hello i'm matilda my question is why do crisps cut your mouth and i'm a 100 year old ha <laughs> why does the sun burn my eyes also i act a 100 year old <laughs> well first of all i don't think this show is for matilda no no no, no. okay no. So really, Matilda shouldn't be listening or asking questions at all, I don't think. Well, do you know what? I've never specified that 100-year-olds shouldn't ask questions. I just said they can't listen to the show. So, Oh, okay. So it's possible I mean, that she just emailed it in without listening. She emailed it in. She can never, ever hear the answer. Okay. But that doesn't mean we should deny her an answer. Okay. Well, I mean, it's. I'm surprised that such a basic question is being asked, to be honest. But um, uh, crisps are cut... Be, uh, the question is, why do they cut like the roof of your mouth kind of thing? Yeah, there's kind of two questions. But the first question is, why do crisps cut your mouth? Um, yeah. And the second one is, why does the sun burn my eyes? And oh, do you okay. think, are they related? I don't know if they're related. Um. Yeah, they are related. And I, I'm just, yeah. I'm sorry. To, I thought you were going to ask like complicated questions, but this is very basic. Um, crisps are actually slices of diamonds, which are very sharp. Right. Uh, I thought people knew that. Um, every time you eat a crisp, you're eating a very thin slice of diamond. And of course, that is honed and pressurized from coal by the sun. So, I mean, unless you have diamonds for eyes, I would not be looking directly into the sun. Um, it's going to burn. It just I, would, I think in general, we can say don't look directly into the sun. That's a pretty safe thing to say. Yeah, I mean, you've answered that very quickly and, and very succinctly. I had no idea crisps were thin slices of diamond and... So does that mean if you were to squish all your crisps together, you'd have a full diamond? Or do you need quite a lot of bags to, to do that? You need a lot of bags, but yeah, you, you certainly can. It's just they're sliced very, very thinly. Um, and of course, you need to find the proper diamond for the flavor that you want. You know, ah. if you want a 
you know, I'm not sure what flavors you have over there, but if you want like a barbecue crisp, you can't just take a regular diamond and slice that. You've got to find a barbecue diamond. Right. I'm I'm right. surprised you right. didn't know that. I mean, that, that... I mean you This is taught in schools, right? No, no, not in that. But, you know, I wonder if that's because of a uh, big crisp who don't want people mm. to find out their secrets. Um, you know, obviously you're, you're trying to change that now with Chris's crisps, Chris's crisps, Chris's crisps, Chris's crisps, but, yes. but currently the big crisp, uh, corporations want people to just eat their crisps. Yeah. And I don't know how many people would eat their crisps if they knew they could squish them together, get a massive diamond and then put it on a hat, uh, a crown and parade around and then, looking fancy. Right. But then if you walked around with that. You're in danger of someone saying to you, you can't come into this club, no crown. I mean, that's always... Uh, no crown, yeah. 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 Um, you know, I I think that, uh, like, I'm surprised by the number of people in in the UK that dilute their crisps. You guys yes. get, like, a little yes, can take... of crisps. You yeah. add water to it mm. to make it all mushy. So in the US, we just have crisps in a bag. We open them, chips or whatever they call them. We just open them eat them. We we don't dilute them the way you guys do. Right. Yeah. No, we sometimes get it's a small cube and you dilute it and then you have to like roll ro like it goes into a ball of mush, you roll it out with a with like um a rolling pin and you cut it into things using like cookie cutters and then you lay it in the sun and then they dry out and then you can eat it. It takes a long time. Oh, okay. So you you um I see what you're saying. It sounds like you're describing just cooking. But maybe you, but maybe that's what you call dilution over there. Yeah, no, the, the dilution bit is that we have to add water to the to the little. Heat. Got you. Yeah. Okay, I I will say in the in the U.S. we don't call just anything involving water dilution, but um, that's uh, because I remember the time that we were we were playing football out in the field and you got some mud on you, mm. and I you diluted, said, "Oh, I've yeah. got to go home and get diluted now." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, "I'm going to go." clean up and take a shower i will take a bath or something like that but you were like i'm just going to dilute myself yeah yeah that's what we do and that's when you uh i think in, in america you call it going swimming in the uk we we yeah. go just big dilution tank and um it just sort of dilutes us into a kind of larger larger watery mass that makes it okay I, you know I'm, I'm learning a lot because like uh when i said i was going to come visit you yeah in london you said, oh, good luck flying over the Atlantic dilution tank. Yes, yeah. And I was yeah. like, uh, do you mean the Atlantic Ocean? But uh, now it makes sense. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's why fish are, like, really diluted. Uh, everything in the ocean is super diluted. Like, if right. you want to get a, a full fish, you've got to really – you've got to find one in the desert. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, – I mean, I would say most things in the ocean are pretty wet at this point. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, pretty well. There's a I, also, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a lot of water in most of the ocean. Yeah, it in, in most of it, but there's got to be a few bits where there aren't. Like oh, yeah, there's a, a few bit of breathing space, you know. Yeah, there's a few few dry. Just like in um, on land, we've got lakes. Yeah, just like that in the water world, they've got little dry pockets as well. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. And, and I was also going to point out to you that you know because I think you you know. Where where you are in the US, it's quite sunny, but here in the UK, we get a lot of rain, and so we're just always like we're always a bit diluted. Yeah, um, and and here we are uh, dry all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I said that I was taking a shower, I mean like a dust shower. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. No, it makes um, it makes because you know, sense. like uh, I don't know if you have the comic book uh, peanuts over there, mm -hmm. but there's mm -hmm. a there's you know a character that basically takes baths in dirt. Pig pen. Yes, yes, yes. That I should say for actually... any listeners with a peanut allergy, just skip this bit. Yes, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and uh, for, that is representative of how most Americans take baths. We just go into right. Um, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, and that makes perfect sense. It's also why you can eat undiluted food, you know, because you can kind of take it with the consistency. We we need the dilution, otherwise. Uh, we just can't, we can't take it. You know, it, it's too hard when we are mostly water ourselves. Yeah. I mean, really, I would say the UK is like the kingdom of water. Mm. I would say we're pretty dry over here. We're like the kingdom of air. Yeah. You know, 
Yeah. There's probably it's a what, Kingdom uh, you, of Fire. There's probably, you know. Yeah, I was just going to say, I've made a film about it recently. I'm, I'm sure I've seen adverts for it, like Elemental or something it's called, I think. Yeah, yeah, It's just yeah. about all the, different, all the different countries in the world. I'm sure it was. Yeah. Yeah. It's either that or Oppenheimer. Well, one of those two is yeah, one of the those. story of... Yeah, one of those two. Yeah, I haven't worked. I haven't seen either. Yet. I haven't worked it out, and I don't. I don't know what in-flight movies you've got in your space travel there. Oh, this is just Britney Spears videos. Oh, sure, sure, of course. Just, just it's more of a cultural exchange so that we right. understand <laughs> sure. what it's like. You would hate this spaceship, by the way, because there's only Britney Spears videos. Um, you say that, but I could make myself look like Meryl Streep for the whole journey, and that sounds hilarious. So that's true. There is no bathroom on the spaceship. That's why we got to make those stops. That's oh, unfortunate. Sure. That's quite bad. I, I don't think you would like that. Yeah, that is a shame. And you, I sort of thought in space you could just have a pee and it will float away. But yeah, I guess that's no one wants that. Yeah, I mean when, it will float away, but it'll be loose in the spaceship. So yeah, so it's not it's not very nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I think you're being kind of humble, by the way, because you actually hold the record for the shortest uh, ro- car trip before needing to go to the bathroom. Yeah, I opened the door um, and I had to then get straight back out and, and go for a pee. Yeah, because we yeah. got in the car. We were driving to I think Manchester from London. I think we went about 100 meters down the road, and you said I gotta go. Yeah, 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 yeah. And. Then I immediately called the uh, Guinness Book of World Records. Oh, you were very register. quick. You were very quick, yeah. and I, I, I was really grateful actually, and I'm so pleased my name's in there for something. Yeah, uh, for, for something. Uh, I mean, I, we, we were kind of like, why didn't you go before we started moving? Yeah, because I didn't uh, need to go before we started moving, and then that's right. you know that's the key. That's the key. I think a lot, a lot of uh, grown ups in particular don't understand that. Um, <laughs> Well, listen, Chris, this is, uh, you answered that question so succinctly and so fast. And I hope Matilda likes that answer. I, I don't think we've ever had a question answered as quickly. And I, I, I really appreciate it. I mean, it. it doesn't really matter because Matilda's not going to hear the answer. So. Yes, also a good point. So it doesn't. Um, I do have a question. When when she turns 101, is she allowed to yes. listen to the. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah. Every age except 100. 99, fine. 101, fine. Not. It's, they, they've got enough going on, basically. They don't need. They, they don't need to take up, you know, the listening time on this that other people need at, at different ages. So it's just about being kind. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, also, if a 100-year-old... I, I don't think a lot of people know this about audio, podcasting, mm. radio stuff, but when you listen to one of these interviews, you're actually, like, taking it away from someone else. Yeah, that's so, how it works. There's only so there much is a, of it. There is a, yeah. yeah, there's a zero-sum amount of uh, audio bits yeah. in the world. So we don't really want a 100-year-old listening to it. No, no, no. Because a 99 year old might will be denied. Well, it's exactly. I'm, I'm so glad you understand, Chris. I, 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 you understand so much, actually. I'd say just talking to you today, I feel like I've I've learned so much, uh, mainly about where I've gone very wrong in my life, but but also you know lots of other good things as well. And um, dun, dun, dun. oh my gosh, Chris, you've just whoa! I just leveled up. You just leveled up. Wow! Do this you feel is good? Yeah, I feel really good. And by the way, I wanted to ask you, what are your what are your salary requirements for this job that you're interviewing for? Do you pay in crisps? We uh, we only pay in Chris's crisps. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, but you're not allowed to make them into diamonds. You have to eat them. Yeah, this sounds great. I'm in. Okay, you're hired. Fantastic. When do I start? Uh, you start. You started already. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so, so much to Chris Grace for having time to answer Matilda's question while he was on his way to Jupiter. Um, if you are a grimy beetroot head, sorry, grown up, um, and you're listening and you're at the Edinburgh Fringe, then be sure to go and see Chris's show uh, that he is doing there for the rest of the month. I'm afraid it is not suitable for you smaller people. Uh, Matilda, I hope you liked your answer. And if not, why not take any complaints you have and dilute them so much that by the time they get to me, they're mostly water and I can drink them and ignore them. Thanks. If you have a question that needs answering, and I really need some sent in so there can be more Radio Nonsense episodes, then please get your grown-ups to help you email me at podcast at comedyclubforkids.co.uk. If those grown-ups also fancy helping support this show, they can sign you up to the Linda edition, which is advert-free, and means you get episodes a whole day earlier too. And enough people sign up, there may well be bonus content at some point as well. Come and see our live shows, which you can check out at comedyclubforkids.co.uk, and we are at the Edinburgh Fringe all August, as well as loads of other festivals too, so hopefully see you there. Oh, what is this? No, I ordered a bee. 
Your replacement earwig service? Ugh, okay. Just get me out of the mailbag, okay? Ooh, that was close. The whole mailbag is now the size of a small lychee. Uh, replacement earwig, can you take me to the shrink ray so I can fix it? Thank you. Ah, there you go. Uh, oh, I see. Dozens of minuscule stinky hippos jumping on the shrink ray's button. <laughs> yep, that's fixed that. Now to get big again. No, why does that make me massive? Ah, oh, my fingers are now too big to press the button. On the shrink ray to get back normal size. Ah, oh, the shrink ray just shrank itself. This is ridiculous. I'm fed up. Why does everything around here go wrong? Is it me? Am I the one that ruins it by using all my money to buy a shrink ray instead of a cabbage or juggling balls or a three-piece sofa or an antelope called Jeremy? Oh wait, Luke meant that I'm the joke! Ah, oh, well this is the worst day ever! I'm just gonna go to the toilet and work out how to fix this. Oh no, I forgot the toilet's now the size of a small pear. And a giant earwig just broke it anyway. Oh well, at least now I can sit on its back and it'll take me to the shops to finally buy that cabbage. Oh. Bye! You have been listening to Comedy Club for Kids Presents! Radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, it's the end.